All right. So I'm not 100% sure where I left off. Um, it's been probably like six months since I last worked on this. Uh, this was a funny playing AGB Game Boy Advance IPS kit that someone had uh, ripped right in this little crease here. Um, and I decided I wanted to try repairing it. So in the last part of this video, I had spent hours um, tracing the connections with a multimeter on a good kit and then repairing them by just soldering to the 32 pin side and then straight to the components on the uh, the conversion side. Um, but unfortunately that wasn't the only problem. I also had to cut out the part that was ripped to get rid of a short and then I found that the IPS connector itself was broken too. I tried fixing that with my soldering iron and um, melted it. So I stopped there when I melted it because none of these pins in the area that I melted are gonna work. It's just, it's the way it is, unfortunately. And I just put it away because I was so defeated and I didn't wanna touch it. But anyway, recently I um, decided to pick this project back up again. And I have these other two, uh, not funny playing, but um, I've been calling them one chip brand kits because they have one chip instead of the five that the funny playing ones have. Uh, and they have a similar problem. I'm not sure how this happened, but the uh, connectors on both of them are missing pins. So that's this one. And as you can see, there's a pin up here that's missing. It looks like a ground pin. So that's probably not the problem that this one has, but we'll play with it anyway, just in case. And this one, which is missing a few pins on the bottom here. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to be trying. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll try both because I want to get some practice in. I value these two kits less than I value this kit, especially with all the work that I've put into it. And yes, I know for all the work and time that I put into these kits and that I will be putting into these kits, I could have just bought a new one um, and saved myself the effort, but then I wouldn't have learned something. Um, be that a new skill, what have you, um, or that stuff like this is a waste of time. Anyway, um, I don't really have a plan of attack here. Ooh, that's gonna be a problem. I don't feel like picking that off, so we're not gonna do that one. We'll just try on this one and hopefully I don't need to the other one. Um, yeah, I don't really have a plan of attack here. I'm going to try desoldering the connector by hand with my soldering iron. Uh, since I know that it melts, I'll just put a blob of solder on it and uh, hope for the best. And then I will try replacing the connector. I bought both sides of the connector, the male and female side. Uh, I know I need... I, I knew which side I needed, but I was thinking maybe I could jam the female end in Hmm. <laughs> um, into into the male end, and uh, you know that that would give me a little bit more uh, structure to work with to prevent melting it. But I've actually got a new strategy as far as reattaching it goes that I think just might work, um, and I'm gonna give it a try. I I saw this in a video on YouTube, and instead of researching it, I'm just gonna. Um, send it and see what happens. But uh, basically, instead of hitting it with hot air from the top, it just hit it with hot air from the bottom. And I feel like, especially with such a thin ribbon cable, I have a better chance at getting it to work by doing that. So that's what I'm going to try. But first, I need this connector gonzo. And that looks like it worked surprisingly well. I mean, not, not that I expected failure. No, of course not. Oh, 
want to make sure there's a moderate amount of solder on all these pins here. All right, so that is indeed a good way to get this off. Um, I'm going to do the funny playing one too while I have the iron on. I don't know why I put these wires in there. Not like these wires go to this specific kit and can't be repurposed for anything else. This, I hate this. Just stay on the stand, thank you. I believe the funny playing one is going to be an order of magnitude more difficult because of how close the MCU is to this connector. But we'll uh, try to make it work anyway. And I didn't even knock that capacitor off. How's that? I think we're off to a good start. Cool, 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 cool. All right, next up. I am going to be masking off the parts that I don't want to fuck with um, with this aluminum ducting tape. The idea is that hopefully it will prevent other parts from uh, absorbing too much heat and fucking off on me. Which is a bigger concern, I think, on the funny playing ribbon than the uh, off brand one. Because on the funny playing ribbon we have this what I believe is a BGA chip right next to the connector well I know it's a BGA chip because I can't see any pins removing this is gonna be um, kind of annoying and I hadn't thought that through but burn that bridge when we get to it Have to be considerably more careful with this one. But the idea here is that even if the solder melts for the BGA chip, this tape is going to hold it in place. And I don't have to worry about trying to reball something that freaking tiny. Which is currently beyond my skill level. Alright. Whew, getting nervous. Okay. So the plan is, and I'm going to have to bring the camera way up. I don't want to damage that. We have about 15 minutes because I'm in the middle of something right now. Uh oh, that made a noise I didn't like. Apologies, my lighting is going to get kind of wonky. Um, it's It stops at about this height. Uh, as I go up, you can see. Yeah. And this thing is right above that. And there's not much I can do about it because these things are only so tall. But, uh... Fuck it, here goes nothing. I will put the part numbers for these parts in the description, but here is the part number for the um, ribbon side connector. I got it from Mauser. 
this is the part number you want right here. It's a long one, but like I said, it'll be in the description. The extra flux should cook off, and I need tweezers. So yeah, like I said, I saw this technique in a YouTube video, and instead of doing research, I'm just going to send it and see what happens. Hope for the best. So that is not in the right spot, but with all the flux there, I can't really do anything about it. But uh, here goes nothing, I guess. Oop, that moved. I need to point that away. Tweak that down a bit. Nope, still not flat. I guess we're not doing this with light. Problem is, I can't actually tell if it's soldered down or not. I guess I'll just remove heat and see what happens. Feels like it's soldered. I think that might have been it. A little bit too hot though. Didn't melt the connector. Has all the pins. I think we're in luck. All right, I'm gonna pause. No, that's already cooled down. The clip is hotter than the ribbon. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I ripped this ribbon trying to remove this? Yeah, hilarious isn't the right word. I think most of the flux burned away, but I'm gonna still pause for a minute and go clean this up because I don't want to get flux in uh, one of my good test LCDs, so I'll beer be. Okay, so I'm gonna have to figure something else out to test the funny playing one, but this should work for this kit. I am going to use this Game Boy Advance SP and then one of these 32-pin adapters. 
Uh, but let me just go ahead and take this apart real quick. Huh. Didn't expect that to split that cleanly. Cool. All right. Go ahead and plug that in. And just to verify that this is working, I am going to use a kit that I am fairly confident already works. And by fairly confident, I mean I know it works. So. Ta da! Well, mostly. It's kind of glitchy, but that's the kit itself. I think. Could also be the connection. But it works enough that we know that it works. Do I have... All right, I'm gonna unplug this. Slide that on out of there. time with this. There it goes. I just didn't have it lined up. Alright, here goes nothing. I don't actually remember what this kit did. Um, and this kit may have other problems. That seems to be my luck. Yep. Absolutely nothing. Let me... Yeah, nothing. But to be fair, I have no idea if this kit has ever worked. Um, I think it's good enough for a proof of concept. Let me pull that off and see if the connector comes with it. Nope. I think that's it. I think that's my method for replacing these. When I got this particular kit. It was um, very wrinkly and it's never worked so I don't know. Should I try one more before moving on to the funny plane kit? Nah, screw it. Let's just send it. That is most definitely not flat, but I think it's the best we're going to get, so I'm going to hope for the best. Here goes nothing. Hmm, maybe it is flat. Who'd have guessed?
Uh oh. It's not lining up like the other one did. I might still have to try soldering this by hand. That might be why the other one didn't work either. Yeah, that's not soldered. Might be now. I don't think it's a line though. Hmm, maybe it is. Looks a hair crooked, but it looks close enough. Alright, so I can't plug this in on the 32 pin side, I need to plug it in on the 40 pin side. So I'm going to use my, um, my 34 to 32 pin adapter right here. Let me try this out. I need a Game Boy Advance game. Well, I actually don't need a game. I just want one. And for those wondering, this Game Boy Advance SP does not boot. Notice the lack of RAM. literally just using it as a power supply. Where's my screen though? It's not it. It's over here. And if this doesn't work, I'm confident that the issue is that um, it's just not soldered in properly. <laughs> it wasn't soldered at all. Okay. I have no idea how I'm going to get that out. But, um, eh, I got a few minutes to kill. I'm kind of frustrated that I got the other one on so easily. Couldn't verify it was working, but it was still on there at least. And then this one I'm not having any luck with. I didn't rip any pads though, so I don't know what it was actually stuck down on. Probably nothing. This might not come out without um, damage, either to the connector that I'm trying to save, or to the screen itself. Oh, 
Nope, never mind. It looks like it came out. All right, I'm going to try soldering it by hand because screw it. I would have caught that if I'd cl tried cleaning up the flux. But alas. Just gonna keep doing this and hope for the best. The other side, one more time. That might be it. I'm going to go try clean up the flux and see what happens. Beer bee. All right, I'm still a little bit worried about the connections on this side, and quite frankly, this ribbon's been through a lot, so I have no idea if this is going to work even. But um, here goes nothing. Ideally, I should probably give it more time to dry, too. Especially since that's a BGA chip. But what the hell. Oh, that's interesting. Now it won't even boot with the screen plugged in. Oh, I was afraid of that. The connector came off again. I'm really not having a good time soldering this down. Might have to play more with this off camera. There was a short or something. Who knows? Okay, got that off. No damage to the screen. It appears no damage to the connector. So I'm going to try again momentarily, but I don't have enough time to try again right now, so I'm just going to clean up the pads and then I'll pause for a wee bit. Alright, 
I will be back. Thanks for sticking with me so far. All right, so I did more soldering off camera because, I don't know, I, I figured it might help if I could uh, get in nice and close and not have to worry about filming. Um, it is more difficult to film um, and solder at the same time. It, it just, it is. I'm sorry. No two ways about it. I do my best work in, you know, in the dark with no camera. Um, but I did look at this other kit a little bit closer and I managed to mess up the connector just now um, but I was looking at the sides specifically this isn't even the right one this one does actually work I uh, just plugged it in tried it out and it works so I'm not fucking with it that explains why this looks funny the one I meant to talk about is right here so this one I looked at a little bit closer and I saw that the reason I wasn't getting a signal is because some of the pins are actually ripped up on the ribbon and I just didn't notice before. This far side seems fine, but this close side is all ripped up and there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Um, I'm not saying that this is out of my ability to fix, but it is certainly, certainly out of my interest. Um, this is one of the first revision um, backlight kits and these ones dropped frames like mad so I mean it's even if I get it working I'll never use it so I think I'll just save it for parts this one on the other hand um, this is the one that I have hope for I just spent the last 20 minutes really trying my best to get that solder down. I think I finally got it. I haven't even tried it yet. I have verified that the Game Boy boots, or at least this one starts to and it doesn't shut off. So this is probably booting, but I have no way of verifying without plugging in a screen because there's no power LED, there's no speaker, there's nothing. So we're gonna power that off, hook in an LCD and hope for the best. And if this doesn't do it, I don't know what else to try except more in the dark without the camera rolling. <laughs> but uh, here goes nothing. Ah. Uh. So that's not necessarily a bad sign uh, that this thing powers off. Um, this is just a really, really jank setup. And unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it without just getting another Game Boy. Uh, so I will go do that. I'll be right back. All right. So I found this junker. and get it ripped out. Ripped up part. Uh, just kind of checked this in my parts bin. And i um, just going to save it for something. I guess this is that something. Notice the connector actually stayed on the ribbon this time. Set that aside. And you know what? Before I even plug this into that, let me double check that this stupid thing works. Where is? A power supply, there it is. Where is my charger? There it is. I'm just going to keep it off to the side because that makes my life easier. Trying to find room for this on my crowded desk. Minus battery plus. Oh, this is already tested. This works. If the power supply's on. Yep, 
There we go. The screen is totally, totally dead. Well, not totally dead, but really in a not good spot, so. If I get this fixed, maybe I'll just backlight this Game Boy. Game Boy works. And the reason I am not accepting that power, that failure to boot on the other setup I have is because that Game Boy Advance SP is kind of jank, if you couldn't tell. And um, if there is too much load on one of the voltage rails, I don't know which one because I haven't cared enough to find out, it just powers off. So it could just be that the backlight kit was trying to draw too much power and it wouldn't power on. And it could be drawing too much power because there's a short, which is the same behavior I'm getting on this one, unfortunately. Okay. So, let's flip this over. The, you know what? Hang on. Hang on. I've been awful rough on this screen. No, that still looks fine. Well, shoot. The screen works. Let's just double check. Nope. Still nothing. Okay, so maybe. still a problem with my soldering because that boots without anything plugged in. I have no idea what that could be then. I will say I am absolutely devastated that it's not working though. I'm going to keep attacking this side because there were several shorts on this side that I have tried very earnestly to clean up, and this side looks absolutely fine. Ooh, there's a short on this side too. Never mind, that could be it. Alright, I am going to pause some more while I solder because this is going to take me a while and it requires a lot of focus, so... BRB. I'm using this flux, not the um, hot air flux. This stuff's easier to clean up. Alright, I figured out the problem and it was really freaking dumb. I had the connector placed one pin over, so yes, it probably was shorting when I had the LCD plugged in on account of the wonderful ground rails. So, let's try it one more time. That's why it wasn't, that's why it was working when nothing was plugged in, but as soon as I had the LCD connected, it just did. Uh, the game. Verify this thing still works. Indeed it does. And... Here goes nothing. I did melt one of the pins a little bit trying to solder this stupid thing by hand. But uh, I think we're going to be good. Oh. No. Well, that's progress, I guess.
The backlight is coming on. I think. I can't tell. Let me double check with one more LCD. I'd have to swap in yet another new connector because I did melt this one. Oh, wait, no, it is coming on. There's just no backlight. Oh. Ha 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 ha. I know that is basically impossible to see. You'll have to take my word for it. But it is working. Oh, all right. A little bit more soldering. A little bit. I'll be back. Oh man, I finally got it. So the screen plugged in to the ribbon, patched with my magnet wire, plugged into this Game Boy Advance, and it's working. The uh, problem I was having with the backlight was either that the connector wasn't fully attached or that there was a short on it. I think there was a short. Anyway, it was just a lot of manually retouching up the joints. I had gone over it several times with the iron. Um, at this point, I'm like... Uh, it's 1010, so I am like three hours worth of soldering into this thing. Uh, but it's working. This is, I have all the colors, everything's working like it's supposed to. Um, I have no idea if I have brightness controls and I don't even think I'm going to bother because if they're not connected, I'm not bothering to wire them up. Um, unfortunately I think that is some of the things that got cut when I had to trim out the short, but look at this. Oh man, I'm so excited. And this SP kit is literally just stuck to the back. It's not plugged into anything. Oh wait, no, I'm missing some colors. And as I touched it, it just changed. Ooh, so the question is, is that the ribbon or the connector? Hmm, I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna keep uh, fussing with it and hopefully I'm just going to give these all a quick jiggle. Okay, those are all connected solidly on this side and on this side. No idea why I just lost that. As I fuck with it, the colors change. I think I just need to get this pressed down flat and not fuck with it. Because right now I have all the colors, but if I start playing with it, I lose one of the col I lose some color information. But anyway, yeah, that's that. So I will um, I'll put a link to the part number and everything in the description. Here is the LCD side if you want it. Um, I wouldn't even bother trying to replace these. I didn't, don't even bother trying to get them. I didn't use them. It was just a lot of soldering. I had an easier time soldering it on manually than I did with hot air. There's just simply not enough solder on the pads for surface tension to pull the part into place. Um, especially if your ribbon is like mine and it is slightly warped. So it is what it is. Don't recommend it, uh, but maybe you're better at soldering than me. Maybe with a hot plate, this would be a lot easier. But anyway, I am super in a good mood. This was so much work to get working, and it's finally working. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to go do a build with it. And Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I, I, I don't have anything else to... Anything else to add? Oh, I did end up 
replacing the connector one more time. Um, I pulled this one off and grabbed another new one and dropped it on. Didn't even try hot air with that one. But anyway, it's working. And I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. All right, see you later.